we're continuing our series that we started last week, our, hidden, our teaching series called Hidden Blessings. Everyone say Hidden Blessings. Last week we talked about the idea that behind every battle hides a blessing. Amen? Behind every battle there's a blessing because Romans chapter 8 verse 28 says that our God works everything for the good of them that are called according to his purpose. That love God and are called according to his purpose. So every, if everything is working for the good, that means in good times or bad times, easy times or hard times, battles or whatever, there's a blessing there if I look for it. Amen, somebody? And so we're talking about hidden blessings. Last week we talked about the hidden blessing of battle. And this week we're going to talk about another hidden blessing we're going to dive into. We're going to start Philippians chapter 4, verse 11. I'm going to read this and then we're going to pray. Philippians chapter 4, verse 11 says, not that I was ever in need. Paul is talking. He says, not that I was ever in need. He says, for I've learned how to be content with whatever I have. I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I have learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it is with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or little. For I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Today we're going to talk about the hidden blessing of lack. The hidden blessing of lack. Let's pray. Close your eyes with me. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, right now, I just ask you, Holy Spirit, one more time to move, to continue to move in this place this morning. God, I pray that you will have your way in a supernatural and powerful way. Father, I pray that you open up our ears and our eyes to hear from your word this morning, to receive everything that you want us to receive. Lord, I pray that you open our eyes to see the hidden blessing in the battle of lack right now in Jesus' precious name. Put your hand on your belly. Repeat this after me. Say, Jesus, speak to me today. Open up my eyes. Open up my ears. Let me see what you want me to see. Let me hear what you want me to hear so I can do what you want me to do and be everything you've called me to be. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen. Hey, do you guys ever have something... Is there anything in your life that you just feel like, man, something I just can't live without? Anybody, everybody ever have or just have something in your mind and say, man, what is one or two things you just feel like you can't make it without, you can't live without? Anybody got some things in mind? Listen, let me tell you something. I got several things in mind that that I feel like I would be really, uh, I would really be struggling if I lived without. One of the things, in fact, this actually caused a great ruckus and a great fight one time in, in my household between my wife and I, because one thing that I was without and I thought I couldn't live without was butter. There was no butter in the fridge. And you gotta understand, I'm a, I'm a creature of habit. I'm a creature of, of, I just, I get in a routine. I like to do those same things. And I probably went, I probably went for almost two years eating the exact same breakfast every single day of eggs, bacon, and toast. And on that toast is required butter and jelly for which me to sop up the egg yolk on the plate left over. Amen, somebody, okay? I probably ate that every single day for two years uh, in a season of my life. One day I went to the, to the fridge in the morning to get the butter, and I realized the butter was gone. Somebody had used the last of the butter and failed to inform me that the butter was gone, knowing darn good and well that the next morning I was certainly going to have my eggs, bacon, and toast with butter and jelly. So you know what I did as a very balanced and uh, you know logical individual? I called up my wife. I said, who used the last of the butter and disrespected me in such a great way as to not let me know uh, this is... This will not stand. Luann is, dude, chill out. First of all, it's just butter. Get your butt to the store and go buy some butter. I can go to the store and buy butter. I've already got the toast in the toaster. By the time I get back from the store, the toast is going to be cooled off, and the butter is not going to melt right on the toast, and the whole breakfast is going to be ruined. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, bro, you got, I told you, I got problems. I told you last week, I still got battles. I still got a temper. I still got anger I deal with. I'm, I, I laid that on the line for you. You know this. Listen, I know you're thinking, dude, just chill out. Here's the thing. I know I should chill out, but guess what? Breakfast is very important to me. As is lunch and dinner. They're all very equally important to me, okay? But I thought that... <laughs> And snacks. Snacks are also very important to me. Late night bowls of cereal, very important to me. You understand what I'm saying? Listen, it's all, it's all important. I can't live without it. I got to have it. So I made a big deal. Uh, and you know what I did? I think I ended up finally just biting the bullet, eating my toast dry with just some gross jelly on it. <sighs> but it was 
something I didn't have that I thought I absolutely needed. Now, I'm sure all of us, whether it's butter for your toast <laughs> or something more serious and actually of an actual consequence, we've all experienced and gone through season of lack in our life at some point, of not having something that we at least at the moment feel like or even very in a very real way need in our lives, and it's not there. Amen? Usually when I say lack, you're probably thinking something financial, and it definitely can be financial lack. But lack does not just have to be financial. It could be, it could be a lack in a relationship that you're missing out on. It could be a lack in just a sense of fulfillment or doing what God's put you on, or purpose, doing what God's put you on this earth to do. It could be some kind of emotional lack, just something missing on the inside. But lack, we've all experienced some sort of lack. And guess what? As long as we're on this earth, we will probably continue to experience in some form or fashion a moment or season of lack at one point or another amen and when we go through a moment or a season of lack it's really important to go back to romans chapter 8 28 and remember that the god has already promised i will work i am working everything out for your good amen in fact in the new living translation romans 8 28 paul says he says now know this that's what he says at the beginning know this or understand this and that greek word know in the Greek, literally means to be aware. There, there are a couple of different Greek words for the word know in the New Testament. One that you see often is the word gnosko, which means to know by experience or to know because you have it, to know because you're living it, to know because it's in your hand. But this Greek word know here is not the same. This Greek word know here simply just means be aware of the fact. Amen? Because how many know sometimes there's a gap between what I am aware of in my head and what I actually hold and experience in my hand. Amen, somebody? And when we go through a moment of lack or a season of lack, it is real easy to get lost somewhere in the gap between what I know here, what I know God has promised here, and what I actually have or see in my hand. Amen, somebody? And so, so Paul is reminding you, listen, you, you need to be aware because there's going to be a gap between what you have in your hand and the current experience of your life and what you actually know to be true in your heart or in your head. And this is what I want to say. When you're in that season of lack and you're experiencing that gap, listen to me, don't lose the hidden blessing in the gap between what you know and your current experience. Because the hidden blessing of lack, which is what we're talking about today, the hidden blessing of lack is there in the gap between what I know here, what I know here, and what I'm actually experiencing or holding on to right here in my hand. Don't lose that hidden blessing. Now, if you're in a moment of lack, whether it's financial, relational, emotional, whatever the thing is, butter for your toes, whatever you're missing at the moment that you feel like you need, want, desire, or need to have in your life, listen, let me tell you something. Here's the obvious blessing in a season of lack. Listen to me close. Don't miss this. Philippians chapter 4, verse 19, just a few verses later as Paul continues this thought of lack and, and, and abundance and God's provision. That's what he says. He says in verse 19, this same God who takes care care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. So let me just rock the bat understand something. This is this is not the hidden blessing. This is the obvious blessing of lack. Listen to me close. If you're a child of God, a son or a daughter of God, don't miss this. You need to get this. Lack is only temporary. Amen, Amen somebody. If you are experiencing lack in any area of your life, I want you to know something. God's plan for you is to provide for you. That is not the state of your life. That is just a momentary and temporary season that God is bringing you through. But he will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. Amen, somebody. If So that means this. Listen. Just because I have a need does not make me needy. Amen, somebody? Having a need does not make you needy. A need is something I have temporarily that I'm without. Neediness is a state of mind and an identity. And let me tell you something. 
The moment I said yes to Jesus, his promises became true in my life. That was the last needy day of my life. The moment I said yes to Jesus and received him as my Savior, this promise of him providing everything according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus has been the identity of my life. And I may have a need, but friend, I am not needy. Amen, somebody. I have everything I need in Christ Jesus. Amen. And somebody needs to hear hear that today because you've been experiencing some temporary lack. You've been experiencing some temporary doing without of some things. And you might have even been going through a long season of that. It might have even been something that you have identified when to walk through. I got news for you today, son or daughter of God. Stop saying and walking around thinking that you are just some needy person who's never going to have it all together. You have a God in heaven who in Christ Jesus has promised to supply all of your riches, all of your needs according to his riches in glory you are not needy just because you have a need amen turn to somebody turn turn your neighbor right now say i'm not needy no more now say it with a little conviction like you're actually starting to believe it i am not needy no more say the double negative and all that right now amen Your days of being needy are over right now from this moment on in Jesus' name because the truth of God's word is getting on the inside of you, taking hold and bringing things to life. Amen? Amen. I may have a need, but I'm not needy. Now, the hidden blessing of lack lies in the gap between what you know and what you hold. And the hidden blessing that you get from going through a season where you have a need, going through a season of lack, is this beautiful thing called contentment everyone say contentment say it again contentment this is what paul says in verse 11 he says not that i've ever was ever in need for i have learned how to be content with whatever i have and in verse 12 in the message translation it gives us really a great simple definition of what contentment means, what it means to be content. In the message translation, Paul says it like this, or it translates Paul's writing like this. He says, he says, I am just as happy with much as I am with little. I am just as happy in the cold as I am in the warmth. I'm just, he goes through these things, he says, I'm, but I'm just as happy either way. And friend, that is really what contentment is. Contentment is being just as happy regardless of what's going on. Let me give you a little bit more of a definition. Listen, here's what contentment means. Contentment is internal happiness independent of external circumstances. So what's it mean to be content? That means I'm just as happy based on what's happening on the inside, regardless of what's happening on the outside. My internal happiness is not dependent or does not have an external source. That is contentment. And friend, contentment is a wonderful, beautiful thing for you and I to get to in our lives, a place where we can be just as happy regardless of what's happening around us. In fact, Paul later on when he's talking to Timothy, in a few books down the road, if you, if you turn a few books over in the New Testament, this is what else Paul says about contentment. First Timothy 6.6, 6, Paul says, Yet true godliness with contentment is itself great wealth. Paul says contentment is great wealth in your life. If you can learn to be content outside of any external thing going on, if you can learn to be just as happy in your heart, no matter what is happening on the outside or around you, Paul says, friend, you have discovered great wealth. Because if my happiness has an external source that I have no control over, guess what? When that external source gets messed with, when the butter is empty and nobody told me about it, my whole morning is ruined. Amen, somebody? When my external source of happiness is based on a job that other people might have control over, other people might decide who gets promoted, who doesn't, who gets a raise, who doesn't, or whatever else. Listen, when that external thing that I really can't do anything about, when that gets messed with, if that's the source of my happiness, guess what? I'm not content. I'm bitter. I'm upset. I'm, I'm, I'm enraged. Whatever, however, whatever your response is, you're depressed. Crawl up in a hole, you know. Some people get internal, crawl up in a hole, cover the head with covers and cry for three days. I 
bang the wall, yell and scream until I feel like I feel better about myself. You just, however you deal with yourself. But contentment, Paul says, and listen, you understand this about contentment. Listen, don't, don't get this twisted. Contentment is not complacent, okay? Complacent just stops trying altogether. That's not what Paul's talking about, contentment. Contentment keeps going, keeps striving, keeps making moves, keeps grinding, keeps working, keeps doing everything you know to do. However, contentment goes, says, whatever the results are, I'm not going to lose my source of happiness internally. I'm not going to base my internal happiness, and I'm not going to base my identity based on the external results that I get. That's contentment. That's not complacent. That is contentment. Amen? Paul, and Paul says this. He says, I have learned the secret. Now, this is the only time that that, word, that Greek word secret is used in the entire New Testament is right here in this text that Paul uses. In the Greek, it translates, it translates as, it, the, the Greek translation is to initiate <laughs> into the mystery. Paul says this is the secret. He says, he, and this is what he says, he says, I have learned or I have been initiated into the secret. You know what that means? That means that if Paul had to learn contentment, that means it doesn't come naturally. Amen, somebody? If Paul says, I've learned this, that means at one time he didn't have it. He says, I've learned this secret, and here's what, how does he learn it? How do you learn this secret? How do you get initiated into that secret of what Paul learns later is great wealth? Isn't that amazing? Paul says, guys, I have found something. I have found wealth that is not related to how much money's in my bank account. Paul says, you can have wealth that is not related to how, much, how, many, how many dollar bills you have in your wallet right now. He says that it's called contentment. When you are content, no matter what you have in your wallet, when you are happy, it, no matter what is inside, great wealth, Paul calls it. But he says, he says this didn't come naturally. He said, I, he said, I didn't just wake up with this. In fact, in fact I'm, notice in, in 1 Timothy, he says, godliness with contentment. Which means that these two things are not necessarily the same things. You can be a godly person, love Jesus, love God, know God, walk intimately, deeply, closely with God, have all the boxes checked and do everything you're supposed to do. Read your Bible, pray, show up to church, give, sow, tithe, be a good neighbor, love your neighbor. All of those things can be in your life as they should be. And you can still not have contentment. Paul says you've got to have godliness and marry that with contentment, and then you have great wealth. What's that mean? That means this is something that I'm not just going to pray a prayer. Amen? Contentment didn't come just because I said yes to Jesus at an altar. Paul says I had to learn this. Well, how do you learn that secret to contentment? How do you learn? How do you learn how to find inner happiness, not based on external circumstances. Well, the only way to learn contentment is to go through some moments of need. Amen, somebody? The only way to discover that secret, the only way to discover that great wealth, the only way to discover that no matter what I have on the outside, I've got something on the inside that keeps me sane, that keeps me grounded. I've got a source somewhere on the inside that keeps feeding me con contentment, happiness outside of what's going on. The only way to do that is to have my external stuff disappear once in a while. The only way to do that is to go through a season where God is the only thing that I have. The only way to do that is to allow the Holy Spirit to pull some things out of my life that I thought I needed. The only way to find that kind of great wealth is to allow God once in a while to pull some of those relationships, to pull some of those sources of happiness, to pull some of that income, to pull some of that resource, to put a stretch on some of that. And when I go through some moments where I have a need, I realize, wait a minute, I thought I needed this thing, but I'm able to get through without it because I've got something of even greater sort. I got a greater source on the inside of me his name is jesus amen now listen nobody wants to i don't i do not i do not enjoy lack i don't want to go through a season of lack i don't want to prophesy or tell or pray 
to go through that. I don't want to look in my fridge and not have butter, not one more moment when I'm making toast ever again in my life. But, but if I can learn something that gives me even greater wealth on the other side of that, guess what I just found? I found a hidden blessing. I found a hidden blessing in the gap. <laughs> See, I thought the butter was the blessing. I thought the job was the blessing. I thought the fat bank account was the blessing. I thought the relationship was the blessing. I thought the this and the that was the blessing. And what I didn't realize is that there was another blessing right in there all along. And the blessing is this. What is the blessing? Here it is, verse 13. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. The blessing I learned of contentment by going through the season of lack and the moment of lack is I learned that if I have Jesus, I've got enough to get through whatever season I'm going through right now. It's all through Jesus. Listen, Jesus is the source of inner happiness that is not dependent on external stuff. See, this is, there's nothing wrong with the stuff. Amen, somebody? The stuff is a blessing. Amen, somebody? Uh, listen, I've been poor. I haven't been rich yet, but I've been not poor. Okay? Not poor is better than poor. Amen, somebody? But I know how to walk through being poor and still find contentment because I know Jesus as my source. Amen, somebody? Okay? Don't miss the hidden blessing of contentment that God wants to walk through. And the only way to get that is to recognize Jesus is the source of inner happiness that is not dependent on external stuff. It is a grand, listen to me, don't miss this. It is a grand and glorious day in your life realize you can be happy without the thing out here that you thought was giving you happiness. That when you go through some moments of lack, that when you go through some seasons where everything you thought was your source gets ripped away from you, slips through your fingers, get pulled away from you, whether it's job, whether it's finance, whether it's a relationship, whether it's a, whether it, whatever it is, and those things begin to go, and you walk through that season, and listen, it doesn't make, it, it doesn't hurt any less to lose those things. Loss hurts. Things that you're wrapped, man, it hurts. It doesn't, it doesn't not hurt. I'm not saying you don't feel the pain. I'm saying even as you feel the pain of the loss, there's a peace on the inside of you. There's still a joy on the inside of you. You can still, you can still lift your hands and worship and say he's a good God. You can still see how much God is still doing in your life. That's, and you go, man, I thought, the, I thought that this thing was what was going on. No, it's not. Jesus is that source. Jesus is that source. And the day that you recognize that Jesus is your source for everything you need, is the day that you get free from needing anything else. And that is a glorious day. That is a glorious day. Because that's when I start to get unbound and unwrapped from whatever's happening around me. And I can still do and be who and do what God has called me to do, regardless of what I have in my hand. standing all over this place this morning. I want you to know something, friend. Jesus died and gave up his life and poured out his strength so that you and I could know his strength. He literally gave it up on the cross 2,000 years ago, you and I. The reason Paul says, the reason Paul says, I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength is because Jesus gave up his strength on the hill called Calvary 2,000 years ago. And he did that for you, and he did that for me. It's 
say, hey, right now in this moment, I'm just going to ask you. I'm, you have an opportunity right now this morning. You might be watching online in your living room, watching at work somewhere, driving in front of where you are. might not even be right now live in this moment. It might be later on through this week sometime. But right now, everything's peeling away. There's a little bit of a weird silence, and you're just hearing this clearly. Listen, right now in this moment, Jesus is talking to you. In this building, right now in this room with me, Jesus is talking to you. How do I know? Because you're right, you're beginning to feel, hey man, I, I need to experience that strength. I need to know that strength. I need to know. I, I want to. I, maybe you never even thought about it before. All of a sudden, there's a desire welling up in your soul. Say, man, I need to know that Jesus you're talking about. And guess what, friend? That is the Holy Spirit talking to you, inviting you, drawing you, saying, hey, this is your moment. This is for you. And today, right now, you can know that strength that Jesus is fighting for you know some of the purpose of what Paul's talking about that I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. You can walk out of this room today and change your identity from being needy to being provided for in Christ right now by receiving what he's called for you. By receiving what he's done for you today. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to call you down front. I'm not going to count to ten. I am going to ask you right now, everyone in this room, just close your eyes, bow your head just as a moment. Say, why do we do that? We do that just to block out distractions for a few moments take a moment to get personal and just let the Holy Spirit talk to you. Make this a time between you and the Lord. Forget about who you're around. Forget about who you're with. Forget about what even brought you through the door this morning. Ultimately, it was the Holy Spirit. It was God that brought you to this moment, especially if you're sensing your heart that, man, I need to know this Jesus today. Listen, it doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter how far you've run. It doesn't matter all the crazy junk of your past doesn't matter how many times you've failed, doesn't matter how many times you've sinned, we've all sinned, we've all failed, we've all screwed up, we've all messed up, and if nobody else in this room has, I'll tell you right now, I have done it more probably than all of you. Maybe not all of you, but man, I've messed up a lot. And God is good, God is gracious, and Jesus loves you. Jesus isn't for super religious people who have their act together. He is for them too. Jesus isn't just for and Jesus isn't just for people who have messed their whole lives up and are just living in a gutter somewhere. Jesus is for that too. And he's for everywhere in between. And if you sense a need for him, that need is placed there by the Holy Spirit. And today that need can be satisfied in Christ. Just a moment, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand if that's where you are today. You say yes, yes to Jesus. If you're watching online, just drop that raise hand emoji there. Or just in the comment section, say, hey, man, that's for me. There's a link in the description. You can click that. And, uh, man, we'll follow up with you and pray with you. And, and, and just as a way to respond. You can say, well, why do I even have to respond? Listen, what Jesus said, he said this. He said, if you're ashamed of me before men, I will be ashamed of you before my Father. That's what Jesus said. Now, I think the reason that that's important, I can't necessarily give you a scripture for this. I can just give you years of, of evidence of what I've seen in my life as I've walked with God and, 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 and been there and watched others walk as well. Is this, when I respond publicly to what God is doing privately, it brings heaven and earth together. See, if the Holy Spirit's moving in your life right now, there has to be a, resp there has to be a response to the inward move of the Holy Spirit. And that can be a raised hand, that can be coming to an altar, that can be what, but there needs to be a response to, that says, yes, I'm surrendering, yes, I'm submitting, yes, I'm giving this moment, yes, I'm receiving this right now, okay? And when I respond openly to what God is doing inwardly, it cements that moment together and bring, it just seems to bring that, that world, those worlds together. And I believe heaven wants to meet earth right now in your soul. You realize the need for him. So right now, Right after you say, man, I want to know that Jesus you're talking about, preacher. I want to know that, man, I used to, maybe, maybe you've never experienced salvation. Maybe you've never experienced Jesus and said yes to him in your life. This is for you. Or, man, if you have before, maybe as a young man or young woman, maybe even as a, as a child, you, you surrendered to Christ, but then life happened, you got distracted, and you kind of went your own way, and you're going your own way. You're just not following Jesus right now. Right now, today, this is for you, so you can come back right now in this moment. Say, Lord, I'm Wherever you are, if that's if you're either one of those, online or in this building, right now, if that's you, if you if you're in the building, just, just raise your hand. Right, I'm gonna pray. Amen. Amen. Let's keep those hands up. Amen. It's been a great day for you this morning. I want everyone in this room to pray your pray out loud with me so you can put your hands down if you want to. Let's, let's listen to you. But I want 
everyone in this room to pray this prayer with me out loud so you can hear it with your own ears. If you're watching at home somewhere, pray it with us. Say, Jesus, I come to you right now just like I am, a sinner full of sin. But I believe that you're the Son of God, that you died on the cross, that you rose from the dead, and that you did it all just for me. Thank you for taking my place on that cross. Thank you for spilling your blood Thank you for giving your strength so that I could receive it right now in Jesus' name. Forgive me. Make me new. Wash me clean. In Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, come live on the inside of my heart and help me to follow Jesus every moment from this day on. Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, make this moment more real than the very air that we breathe. Make this moment of repentance, make this moment of returning, make this moment of, of starting over, God, more real than anything we've ever known to this moment. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you will do exactly what your word declares that you will do. In Romans chapter 8, God, you declare that you will bear witness with our spirit that we have become children of God. Lord, I pray that you would do that right now. Right now, begin to change our identity. Lord, from needy to provided for, from fatherless to having a father, from unforgiven to forgiven, from stained to pure. In Jesus' name. going through a season of lack right now. If you're going through a season of lack right now, I'm going to pray, and I believe that God is going to open your eyes to the hidden blessing of contentment. He's teaching you, listen, He is teaching you a secret in whatever season of lack you might be experiencing, whatever area of lack you might experience, there's a, there's a secret that God is teaching you right now, and it's called contentment. How many of you have received that this morning? Come on, raise your hand. If you're ready to receive that secret this morning, I'm ready to receive that secret. Heavenly Father, I pray right now. Leave your hands up all over this building. Just receive this from the Lord right now. Heavenly Father, Lord, we receive right now the hidden blessing of contentment. Lord, we receive right now the secret that you're teaching us through our momentary season of lack. Lord, I declare that it is momentary. It is temporary. But God, we are not going to miss the hidden blessing that lies in the gap between what we know and what we hold in Jesus' precious name. Father, I pray any mindset that needs to be uh, that needs to be turned and changed from one of need to provided for, let that be right now in Jesus' name. God, no matter how big the gap, no matter how long the temporary lasts in our area of lack, Father, I thank you that we are receiving the secret of contentment through the